All right, so how long does intermittent fasting actually take to work? I'm going to be going over all those details today because I know there's a lot of you guys who starting with the New Year's are adding in intermittent fasting to help you achieve your weight loss or wellness goals. And you've probably seen all of the amazing results other people have experienced, but you're wondering like, how long should you actually be waiting to see these results? I'm gonna be diving into those exact answers um, step by step on each of those benefits, how long it takes to see those results, as well as three tips on how you can speed up your results. So um, if you are, let me get to this next slide for you guys. Um, if you're new here, my name is Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. Today's actually day one of our new year intermittent fasting challenge. So we are starting today, it's four weeks long. We're doing detox week this week and then diving straight into the three week uh, intermittent fasting program. So if you guys want to join in, you can check out the details down description below. But today we're specifically talking about how long it actually will take to start seeing results with intermittent fasting and how you can speed up those results. So as you guys have probably seen, um, there can be quite a range of results going on with intermittent fasting. So you guys have seen pretty much all of their stories. These are various a and peeps who have used the intermittent fasting programs to help them achieve their weight loss or wellness goals. You guys have seen um, Jeanette, you've seen Ron, you've seen Corolla. Um, all these stories can be found on my blog as well if you guys want to check out how the results can vary. But it really comes down to a couple different factors. Um, a big one is the type of diet you're starting off with. So what you're eating before you start intermittent fasting. That's a really big factor on how quickly you'll start seeing results. Um, how insulin resistant you are. So if you're more insulin resistant, it'll take a little bit more time to start seeing results. Um, as well as age. So not necessarily what you think of when you think of age, you think of like decreased metabolism. That's not necessarily the case, especially for women or also for men, actually. Um, insulin resistance tends to go up with age. So it's not necessarily the fact that age is the problem. It's that insulin resistance increases as we age. So we just have to be extra cautious of that. All of those can really determine how quickly you're going to start seeing results. But the good news is, is if you're experiencing any of the results that we're going to be going over, you're on the right path. So to get into a little bit of those details, the intermittent fasting benefits that you'll typically see and how long it'll typically start you know, take to start seeing results. Um, first of all, decreased bloating. This is a really big one that most people see results pretty immediately because it helped it, the whole purpose of intermittent fasting or one of the main purposes of intermittent fasting is it actually increases your migrating motor complex, which is our gut cleaning process. So this gut cleaning process is turned on when you're fasting and when you're not eating specifically. So when you're able to actually turn that on, your body flushes out left behind food and bacteria that typically gets fermented and causes bloating. So that's why usually for most people, unless you have a history of SIBO or some other type of gut health concern, most people experience decreased uh, bloating within 24 hours. Some people need a little bit more of a kickstart with their migrating motor complex, which I go over on um, the gut healing guru protocol in the level up guide. But most people will see decreased bloating within 24 hours. Um, the other is increased energy. So with increased energy, this usually is something that most AM peeps will see between three to seven days after starting intermittent fasting. This is this one is really um Important to note that if you aren't also addressing what you're eating during your eating window, you might not ever experience that increased energy levels, which is why what we talk about hugely in the programs is how you break your fast, what you're breaking your fast with, and making sure you're getting enough of the right types of foods to support your goals. So increased energy um, is a result of your body getting better at using fat as fuel. Now, as a result of that, because it does take a little bit of time, if you are more insulin resistant, that's where perhaps you might see, uh, start seeing results within seven days, where if you're less insulin resistant, you might see results for the energy levels increasing a little bit earlier. So more on that three days um, end. It's actually something, I'm not sure if Jeanette is in, the, is in the chat right now, but Jeanette talks a lot about this in the interview I did with her on her whole experience. And she had lost about 47 pounds with intermittent fasting and the proper types of breaking her fast. Um, but she really talks about how um, her energy levels skyrocketed. So that one typically will take about three to seven days. And then for fat loss. So we're talking specifically about fat loss, not weight loss, because weight loss could be water weight. It could be muscle mass. It could also be fat. We're talking about fat loss, which is the very approachable way to weight loss where it's long term. You're not going to decrease your metabolism as a result. We're looking at fat loss specifically, not just general weight loss. 
So this one is really dependent on how insulin resistant you're starting off, um, as well as what you're eating during your eating window. So if you are less insulin resistant, so you're more insulin sensitive, um, and you were eating the right types of foods that are packed with protein, fat, and fiber that we talked a ton about in the updated 21 day program in my complete intermittent fasting bundle, um, breaking your fast with those types of recipes, then you are likely going to see uh, fat loss nearly immediately, even within the first day. This is actually something um, we're in detox week right now, the first week of the intermittent fasting challenge. That's something huge that a lot of people talk about just from addressing their food with the uh, detox program. So if you are more insulin resistant, like perhaps you are pre-diabetic or um, you're very carbohydrate sensitive and you haven't addressed your meals, that can be um, that can cause you to be on that higher end of when you start to see results because the body needs a little bit of time to bring that insulin resistance down so it can start burning fat as fuel. Uh, and if you are never addressing your meals, then you might see results initially and then you might plateau or even start to gain weight with intermittent fasting, which is why, again, I really, really talk about, I'm just going to make myself big to emphasize this. Guys, please remember what you break your fast with is so important for achieving long lasting results with intermittent fasting, making sure that you're not hungry with intermittent fasting, making sure that you're not losing muscle mass. You shouldn't inherently lose muscle mass with intermittent fasting. That's a big sign you're doing it wrong. So if you aren't losing weight or if you're gaining weight or if you're really, really hungry and you've been using intermittent fasting for a while all, or you're losing muscle mass, all these are signs that you're doing the eating window wrong. And I'm really emphasizing that because a lot of people forget about this. So this is literally why I created my 21 day program. I have that listed down description below as well, um, below as well. So make sure if you guys have not addressed your eating window, this is the time to be doing it. New year, got to address that eating window. Okay. Um, now next let's, so that's really how long it will take to start seeing each of those different results. And, and as you saw with that first slide of all the various results, it can really range depending on those various factors. Um, and if you're doing these three tips, so now I want to go over those three different tips on how you can actually speed up your results. These are principles I talk in the 21 day intermittent fasting program, especially the updated one on how you can actually speed up your results so you can get the most bang for your buck out of your experience and feel really great in the process and, and not feel hungry. So let's go over each of these different tips to speed up your results. The first one we have here is to break your fast properly. I kind of just like beat you guys over the head with this just now to tell you, you really need to be making sure you're breaking your fast properly but I just can't stress it enough because it's something that so many people forget about or you disregard. And I don't want you to feel bad or feel low energy or to not achieve your goals because you're not adding in this one crucial step and breaking your fast properly with the protein, with the fat, with the fiber, actually calculating your protein needs, making sure you're hitting that amount. If you do that the right way, you shouldn't even be feeling hungry at all during your fasting period because your body is very, it's very satiated with the right types of food. But because you're also hitting those satiety cues and getting your insulin to come back down, the body is naturally able to use its own fuel source during that fasted state. So there's no need for more energy during that fast. And so your hunger levels don't go up. So that's really the goal when you um, are using intermittent fasting to not just use intermittent fasting, but to also break your fast properly. So uh, like the smoothies that we talked about that are rich with protein, fat and fiber and low in sugar or the egg scrambles or the Greek yogurt bowls, the cottage cheese bowls, um, protein rich pancakes. All of those are ways to make sure that you're actually breaking your fast properly. You're getting the protein, you're getting the fat, you're getting the fiber to stay satiated and to make sure that you aren't going to be hungry during your fasting period. You're not going to increase insulin too much and shift your body out of that um, fat burning state. So um, the first tip, just make sure you're breaking your fast properly. Make sure you're focusing on protein, fat, and fiber with that lower sugar approach. I have some free recipes on my website, on um, my YouTube channel. I also, of course, have the 21-day intermittent fasting program, which is linked down description below with the meal plan. Just make sure you're doing it right. This in itself not only will speed up your results, but if you aren't doing this, then it will likely reverse your progress. Okay. So the second tip to speed up your results is to walk more. 
Um, let me know in the chat <laughs> if you guys, it was your first autumn Bates video, the walking versus running video, or was it the 10 intermittent fasting mistakes? I feel like it's one of those two. That's how a lot of people find me. Um, but if it's the walking, then you know how important walking is to achieving a body recomposition goal and to reduce stress levels. So one reason why walking more is really great during, especially during your fasted state is because walking is a low intensity exercise. So when you're doing lower intensity exercises that don't bring your heart rate up too high, it causes your body to primarily use fat as fuel anyway. And that's what we're trying to get to push your body into a state of when you're using intermittent fasting and breaking your fast properly is to be primarily using fat as fuel. That way, when you are in that fasted state and you aren't taking in um, more food sources anyway, your body will be signaled to use your own uh, fat as fuel fat as a fuel source <laughs> um, in order to achieve that body recomposition goal. Not to mention walking just helps to, it's something that you can do more frequently throughout the day versus just regular exercise. Like let's say if, um, you know, you do a lot of strength training, which we'll get into that in a second, but, uh, or if you do running or hit or whatever it might be, you can't do that all throughout the day, but walking, you can take a one minute walk every hour, literally one minute, but you're just circling around your house. This is my living room and kitchen right here. So oftentimes um, I'll just, if I, my Fitbit tells me that I haven't gotten my 250 steps for that hour, I'll just be like circling around my living room and my kitchen. It's because every time you get up, every time you walk, even just those little moments that add up, it helps to make your, it helps to get your uh, muscles flexing or moving or um, not just being stagnant because more often you can actually move your muscles, even with walking, the more your body is going to become insulin sensitive. And remember, that was a huge factor for how you can actually speed up your results is how insulin sensitive you are. The more insulin sensitive you are, the easier it is to use fat as fuel and the easier it is to see results faster. So you want to make sure that you're walking more. A good strategy, um, something that I talk about in the 21 day intermittent fasting program is to start off your morning walking in a fasted state. So I did that first thing in the morning. I do that every morning is go for at least a 20 minute first thing in the morning walk. So this helps to get my muscles ready for my strength training. It helps to warm it up, but it also takes advantage of a totally fasted state when my body's primarily using fat as fuel. Um, and then on top of that, if you can get a lunchtime walk in, even if it's just 10 minutes or if you can get a longer walk in, great. That helps to also get your cortisol levels, the stress levels lower, because when we're walking outside, especially if you can walk outside, it helps expose us to something called negative ions, which helps to get our cortisol levels, your stress hormone lower. And if you are looking to achieve a body recomposition goal, not only getting insulin more sensitive is really important, but also making sure that you're getting your cortisol from um, spiking throughout the day. Because if we can get that lower cortisol uh, later in the day, it helps to decrease belly fat or weight gain around the belly. So I've talked a lot about that in my different videos. Um, I also talk a lot about it in my intermittent fasting program, but walking more, just see where you're at right now. Even if you're only getting 2000 steps a day right now, double it, try and get 4,000. Or if you're getting 8,000, try and get 10,000. If you're at 12,000, try and add an extra 2000 on there. Just get more than what you're currently getting so that you can help to challenge your muscles and get that more insulin sensitivity throughout the day. By the way, if you guys are getting value out of this so far, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let's me know that I should be doing more of these. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go on to the next tip. So speeding it up, speeding up your intermittent fasting results with this third tip, and that's to add resistance exercise. Okay. So if you guys have downloaded my updated 21 day intermittent fasting program, you saw that I have a whole revamp to my um, strength training routine that's included within the 21 day program. It's because this is so important. I actually just um, interviewed one of the AM peeps who had been using my program for about a year. Saw really great results, um, and her interview is coming soon. She saw really great results and achieved weight loss goal, but then she started to plateau, and she wasn't able to get to that next level for herself. So then she started to add in the strength training portion of the 21 day program that's actually included within it, and she was able to break through her seven month plateau and lose 15 pounds and achieve her body recomposition goal she was looking for. So resistance exercise, the reason why this is really important on top of walking is because it kind of hits our muscles from a different angle. It really, the more we challenge our muscles, which is what resistance training is doing, is really challenging your muscles, the more insulin sensitive it get, it, get, it makes your body. So um, muscles can almost be seen as like a glucose sponge so or a sugar sponge. 
it helps you, especially when you're exercising, helps to absorb that excess glucose from the blood supply. This is getting a little bit technical, but as you um, absorb that excess glucose from the blood supply, when you're strength training your muscles or just using resistance training, it helps to lower how much insulin is needed to bring that blood glucose down. And the lower insulin response, the better or the more easy or the easier <laughs> we can shift back into a state of fat burning. So not only will strength training help to make you more insulin sensitive, it also helps to increase muscle mass and which is a really important thing because it helps to um, increase our metabolism, helps to make us stronger, helps to prevent osteoporosis, all these things that we want. So adding resistance exercise is that extra layer of what you can do to be making sure you're speeding up your results with intermittent fasting. Now, each of these three components, making sure you focus on how to properly break your fast, making sure you're walking more, making sure you're adding resistance exercise, all of this on top of your intermittent fasting schedule will really, really help to amplify your results and make sure that you can get to that next level faster or even break through that plateau. Um, this is something that a lot of people ignore, which is why I want to make sure that we are actually going over these for you guys so you can achieve your results and feel better faster um, because each of these really helps to speed up that process and, and kind of make you jump forward in terms of how quickly you'll achieve your results. So I have on here um, for this is just a picture from the 21 day intermittent fasting program, one of the workouts um, within the program but the strength training and making sure that you're constantly challenging yourself with that strength training. And once you've gotten used to the um, strength training program, adding on heavier weights or decreasing the rest time, just always challenging your body when you are doing that resistance training so that you're always getting that increased insulin sensitivity perk with your strength training or resistance training program. Okay, so all of this is from the fully revised 21 day intermittent fasting program. This is actually what we'll be diving into next week for the new year intermittent fasting challenge. This week we're in detox week. So if you guys wanna join in, it's definitely not too late. You can check out the link in the description down below. So this week, unless you have previously used intermittent fasting, we're just focused on the detox portion. So really making sure we're prepping the liver from the holidays, maybe from a little bit more sugar or a little bit more refined carbohydrate or alcohol intake that we're used to. Um, we're helping to get rid of that, really process that through that phase two um, liver detox amplification, getting those foods in that sport liver detox um, and getting you ready for using intermittent fasting next week. So if you want to join in, you can check out the details for how to join in on the 21 day, 28 day intermittent fasting challenge with the link down description below. Um, I'm going to be going through some questions on here. I know that there's a lot of uh, questions in the chat. Before I do that, though, just let me know what your goal is with intermittent fasting. Uh, you can throw that in the chat or if you're watching this after the live stream, just comment below what your goal is with intermittent fasting because we have a really great community here. We're super supportive. Um, so it's really helpful to just have in writing what your goal is and then you can have the whole community support you along the way. So let me know what your goal is um, with intermittent fasting and I'm going to go through some of these questions. Okay. So, um, by the way, for the questions portion, guys, if you could put a four question marks before and after your question, it's really helpful for me to be able to go through and answer them. So Debbie is asking, how many days should you strength train? It's a good question because it's not necessarily a one size fits all solution. In fact, if you've not strength trained in the past, I don't recommend starting off right away with five or six days a week unless you're only doing about 10 to 20 minutes on those days, it's best to start off with, you know, just start with two days a week and then increase that to three days. And then you can increase that um, from there from four to five days. It's just, you need to have your body ease into that process, build strength along the way. Um, even just starting with that two days per week, or if you're, if you're not getting any type of activity in, start with walking, just get your body first used to the movement, getting, um, building strength through that stepwise process. That way you're able to build strength and not, uh, you know, totally obliterate how you're feeling, get that DOMS. You don't want that. Um, so just make sure you start off with walking, then start with two days per week, then three days per week. You can increase it from there until you get to that four to five um, or even six days per week. I always recommend having one at least complete rest day where you're just walking, foam rolling, stretching, uh, making sure you're really giving your body a little bit of a rest time. Um, but for those maximal, maximizing your results, somewhere in the range of three to five days per week, depending on where you're at in your journey, is a really great place to be. Great question, Debbie. Okay. 
I'm going to scroll to the top, see if there's questions first on here. Oh, we have so many of you guys. This is awesome. Okay. F. Diana is saying or asking, do you need to be on keto and intermittent fasting together or just count your calories and intermittent fasting? Um, no. <laughs> so I'm not on keto. Um, we are really focused. You know, keto is a very, very low carb approach. Some people do very well with that. And depending on how insulin resistant, it might even be necessary for a shorter amount of time. Um, but if you are just addressing based off of your own body's needs, which is what the 21 day program really goes into, you're able to adjust the carbohydrate content depending on your own needs. So for example, if you're really active, you're more, um, you're not very carbohydrate sensitive, then you can be more flexible with those um, insulin responsive carbohydrates. Whereas if you have prediabetes or diabetes and you aren't very active, then you'll want to make sure you're on the much lower end. So it just depends on where you're at um, in terms of your health, as well as your activity level and your age. Just remember when um, typically for, you know, like ages 50 and higher or post-pregnancy even, that's when you start to see a big increase in ins insulin resistance. So you want to first address where you're at with your insulin resistance. You could even ask your doctor for a fasted insulin test to help get an idea of where you're at with your insulin levels and insulin resistance risk. That would be a great way to help determine that flexibility with carbohydrates. And in terms of counting calories, I don't count calories. I don't recommend counting calories. Um, it's not actually addressing the true issue of satiety, of um, shifting the body into a state of fat burning. This is where it's so important that you guys actually read through the programs that I have. So you really have an understanding of why you're choosing those types of foods at the times you're choosing them. That way you don't have to worry about counting calories. You can just focus on the hormonal effect that each of these foods have. Great question. Um, oh, thank you, Susan. Just joined a few minutes late. Excited to do this challenge. Congratulations on your recent nuptials. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Grace is asking, good morning, Grace. My husband wants to do this with me and he's not a huge veggie lover. Are veggies important and how much should we be consuming at each meal? So with veggies, they're really important for the micronutrient content, the vitamin content. You... But you can start off with first focusing on the protein and fat portion. If that's what's if that's what it will take for you to help your husband or help others get involved, at least have them first focus on the satiety portion so that they aren't craving the types of foods that will work against their weight loss or wellness goals. So when you're eating enough of the protein and fiber, so make sure he does that protein calculation that's in the 21 day program. When you eat enough of the protein and, and excuse me, the protein and fat, um, it helps to signal your body to release the satiety hormones, peptide YY and CCK. When you have those elevated enough, you don't even crave the types of foods that will like sugar or refined carbohydrates that'll work against your goals. So if you can at least have your husband start there and then slowly get him to eat some more of those nutrient rich vegetables, um, those non-starchy vegetables, that's a really great place to at least ease into the process. So it's just meeting everybody where they're at. If your husband just hates vegetables or if you hate vegetables or, or whatever it might be, at least start off with the satiety component of getting enough of the protein and fat. Um, okay. Yes. So Irene is asking, is the updated 21 day challenge program free to people who have the first version? Yes. So I talk about this in the blog post as well as the um, release live stream where anyone who had the previous version of the 21 day intermittent fasting program will get the updated version for free. So you should have received it in your email, but if you didn't, then check, um, or then just email us at info at and we'll be able to help you with that. Oh, thank you, Maria. Hi, Adam. I love your channel. I recommend you all the time. Thank you so much. Okay. Urban mechanic is fasting a forever program. It's something that you can do forever. Um, I would first just view it as giving your gut rest. So whether that be you're using a 12, 14, 16 hour fasting period, um, or you're at the very least not snacking between meals, the gut needs rest. We have this natural system of the migrating motor complex that is turned off when we eat. So we need to be at least signaling that to be turning on and cleaning out our GI tract. I mean, it's a hypothesis. No one really knows for sure, but it's my thought process on why we, we've seen such an explosion of gut related health issues is because we've um, in the past 40 or 50 years 
been telling everyone to eat every one to two hours and we're never getting that gut rest. So we're never able to clean out our GI tract. So getting some amount of gut rest is really important. Most people find that once they start using intermittent fasting, that it's become such a lifestyle that you don't even think about breaking your fast earlier. Um, but yeah, it's at the very least, you need to be making sure that you're getting some type of gut rest or using a fasting period, which is about the same thing. Okay. So Ale Aaliyah, I've been doing the detox for three days now, and I've had a consistent mild headache every time I get hungry slash eat. Could this just be a side of detox? I'm following PF and F. Um, so with the detox protocol, uh, it kind of depends on where you're starting before headaches are fairly common because it's, um, it can essentially be a detox symptom of not eating as much sugar or even a better word, like withdrawal symptom. So you probably, you could go in the chat or in the Facebook group. A lot of people talk about their experience where they had a little bit of a headache for the first couple of days and then it went away. So you need to make sure that you are, um, in order to help combat that, make sure you're getting enough water as well as the sea salt. So if it is from the detox component, that headache, if that's what's causing it, then it's largely going to be from just withdrawal symptoms. And what can help that is at least making sure you're getting enough of the water and sea salt to address an electrolyte imbalance that, that often happens when you first are using the detox. Um, so I have a video if you also want to check that out. If you just type autumn baits, intermittent fasting headaches, or even I think intermittent fasting headaches on YouTube, it'll pop right up and I go over those details as well. Yeah, um, Kelly, are you drinking enough water? Half your uh, pounds, body weight in ounces. Yeah, water, but also the sea salt is really important too. Um, just answered the strength chain one. Okay, another great question. So Natalie, is strength training best done in a fasted state too? And is black coffee okay before exercise or not ideal? So kind of like a two-parter. <laughs> uh, so strength training, yeah, I have a video a really, really great video. I think it's coming out on Thursday. That's specifically going into um, the best times to be working out with intermittent fasting, but just like a little spoiler, since you guys are here doing live stream and tuning in right now. Um, yeah. If you can strength train or resistance train during your fasted state, you get a couple perks that you don't get if you're doing it during your eating window. First of all, you get the elevated growth hormone. So growth hormone is a hormone that helps to protect our muscles from breaking down, but it also helps to ramp up fat burning even more. So you get the double whammy protection of growth hormone, um, helping to increase fat burning, which is great for the body recomposition goals, but also to help protect your muscles from breaking down too much. So it is a, a great option to be strength training during the fasted state, but I would recommend just easing into the process Depending on how long you've been using intermittent fasting, you want to make sure you're first getting that metabolic flexibility where your body is able to use fat as fuel. So one really interesting fact about um, resistance training during the fasted state or just, you know, in general, higher intensity interval training or high intensity training um, with using fat as fuel, it's commonly known that the higher intensity things get, the less you're using fat as fuel and the more you're using the fast burning energy source of carbohydrates. So this is why with high intensity interval training, that's primarily using carbohydrates as a fuel source because it's um, because your heart rate is so high that it's requiring that your body's required to use a fast energy source of carbohydrates. So when you have the lower intensity exercise like um, walking, yoga, light swimming, that's primarily using fat as fuel. Um, but there have been some studies that have come out on how the more often your body is used to training with the in a fasted state, but also with fat as fuel, the, the higher intensity you can get while still using fat as fuel. So you get to use fat as fuel even at higher intensity states. So that's from using it more consistently. And this just goes to show how much the body changes um, or, or how, how different things can be from one stage of your wellness you know, journey to the next. The, what you did in the beginning isn't necessarily going to have the same or, um, you know, the same impact as what you do later. It could have a much better or, or lesser um, result the more often you're using it. Okay. Oh, I forgot to answer the black coffee. Yes, black coffee is okay during the fasting period before exercise. I usually like to do just completely fasted workout. Like this morning, I just had my keto coffee. Sad. It's gone now. I think it was like one sip. 
Uh, but I always do my walk and my exercise in a completely fasted state just because I want to get that pure growth hormone perk. You still will get it with a black with black coffee. I don't really like black coffee, so I just keep it to after I work out. Okay. Okay, so Diana is also asking about intermittent fasting with SIBO. So for those of you guys who don't know, SIBO is small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So this is um, one common thing that they've really seen skyrocketing. Unfortunately, um, my theory is also that it, this is from eating too frequently. So absolutely, you really want to kickstart that migrating motor complex, help to flush out that overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestine. That's exactly what the migrating motor complex does. So when you um, have SIBO, usually the migrating motor complex has really slowed down or is never being triggered. So that's one important aspect is to help trigger that natural cleaning process to help get rid of that um, overgrowth within the small intestine. Uh, Mind Park, yes, this will be available later. So you can definitely watch this later as well. Um, okay. Lena is asking, I feel tired in the afternoon on 24. So, uh, 20 hours of fasting, four hour eating window. I'd be curious to hear, first of all, what you're eating during your actual eating period or eating window. Um, is, are you feeling tired after you eat? Are you feeling tired before you eat? How long are you in this journey? All that can really depend on the energy levels you're experiencing. I don't usually recommend a four hour eating window just because it's pretty hard to get all your protein needs within that period. Um, I have seen that for some people that when they do try and get all their protein needs with a four hour eating window, it does make them sleepy because it's just simply so much food that you have to eat to get all your needs in within that eating window. Um, and you know, it takes a lot of energy for your GI tract to break that down. So if you're eating a lot of food during a small amount of time, it does have the potential to make you feel sleepy. So a um, couple different factors there. It could be that your eating window is too small and you need to widen it, or it just simply could be you're eating the wrong types of foods during your eating window. Um, so take a look at both those things and, and that should help. Uh, I kind of, AJS is asking about the specific amount of carbs or sugars that um, he should limit himself to per day. Just I went over that a little bit earlier. So if you rewind, I think about like 10 minutes ago, and I go over that in detail. Okay. Life with Shakitra is asking, Be, being insulin resistant, should I cut back on certain sauces? I love sauce. Any that have sugar, yes, cut out the sugar that's in any sauce. So you can actually make your own sauces that have zero sugar. Um, you can make tomato sauces. You can make you know, whatever type of sauce, pesto, amazing, that has zero sugar. But just make sure that your sauces have zero sugar because when you're more insulin resistant, you're more carbohydrate sensitive as well. So you really need to be cautious of those simple digestible sugars. Um, make sure that those are not in the sauces that you're using. Okay. Anjali is asking about carb sensitivity. So she said that um, carb sensitive, but find that when I don't have a carb heavy dinner, I struggle with sleep. What would I recommend? Yeah. So with carb sen sensitivity, at the very least, you can choose. And if you find that you struggle with sleep, first of all, I would take a look at what you're doing that um, one to two hours before bed. Make sure that you don't have tech. Make sure that you're not um, getting your cortisol spiking, make sure that you go on an evening walk. All of those can really help to make sure that you're improving sleep quality. The magnesium, make sure you use a high quality magnesium to help improve melatonin as well. Um, I have, a, I go over that in um, the various programs as well as I have a couple videos on how to improve your sleep quality from even just not a food perspective. So from the habits that you're doing, see if that helps first. And then if that doesn't help, and if you do need that a little bit of starch to help with that increased melatonin bump, then make sure you're choosing the slowest releasing carbs. So like beans and lentils are going to have protein and fiber in there too. That'll really slow it down. Those will be some better options or use the less um, starchy dense options like butternut squash or spaghetti squash. All of those can help to provide a little bit more of that starch to help with your sleep quality, but not overload your body since you are carb sensitive. Okay, a couple more questions for today. Okay, 
Speaking of sleep, Anastasia has a great question. What about sleep? Is it so necessary for good results? And if so, which sleep regimen is the best? <sighs> yes. <laughs> sleep is so important. It actually like just made the cut um, for this video today. So it's, it's really, it's so important because what happens when you don't get high quality sleep is a couple of hormonal shifts happen the next day. First of all, you get increased hunger hormone ghrelin. So it makes that fasting period really difficult because you are going to have that increased hunger. It also causes increased stress hormone cortisol. So you're going to get that increased stress level. Um, increased cortisol tends to make us crave more of those starchy, sugary foods that work against your weight loss or wellness goals. Not to mention higher cortisol levels also are really tied to weight gain around the belly. Um, and a third concern is that it also increases insulin resistance, making it harder to burn fat as fuel. All of that happens after one night of poor sleep. So done consistently night after night after night, that can really either cause your body to plateau or, or not achieve any type of results. So it's not that you have to have perfect sleep, but at least trying to improve your sleep quality with, with what you can do with your schedule and lifestyle. So if because your work or because you have kids or whatever makes it so that you can't have the perfect sleep, at least make sure that you're not watching TV before bed. You're not on your phone before bed. You go for some type of walk, five minute walk outside to help expose your eyes to um, darkness, which helps it naturally raise melatonin. Make sure you do it. Take a magnesium supplement that um, is actually high quality magnesium supplement to help get your body in that relaxed state and increase melatonin naturally. Make sure at least the sleep you're getting is of high quality so you can help to uh, avoid all of those issues of um, sleep deprivation or, or poor sleep quality. I think I also have a video coming out on that soon too. So stay tuned. Yeah. Um, Kelly says, I just reread the program today. She's talking about the 21 day intermittent fasting program. So important. Please make sure you guys are reading through the program. Um, really important. Make sure you're achieving your goals. Oops. Um, do you have a list of non-starchy veggies we should eat? Yes, I have in the 21 day program in the level up guide, both of those programs, I have a list of non-starchy veggies as well as a list of higher quality starchy veggies. So make sure you check those out in either the 21 day program or the level up guide. Both are, or the complete bundles linked down description below. Okay. One more question. So if any of you guys are just tuning in right now, this is day one of the new year intermittent fasting challenge where we're following the detox this week. And then next week for the next three weeks, we're going to be using the 21 day intermittent fasting program. So if you want those details on how you can join in, make sure you check out the link down description below. Oh, oh, Tracy is so nice. Um, I've been doing intermittent fasting for three years and helped me a lot. And watching your videos helped me to help me too. And I want to say thank you. You're very welcome. Oh yeah, Julie, been following for you for a year now, and I'm finally starting the challenge. Easy to walk in this beautiful SoCal weather. Agreed, except it's really cold here. It's like 30, well, cold for us. It's like 35 degrees out right now. <laughs> Um, okay. So Joni is asking about hunger. Do you recommend any teas that reduce hunger? Yeah. So there's actually a really great natural option you can do. Mint tea is a natural appetite suppressant. So what I like to do is just take mint. So mint grows like an actual weed. It's insane. It grows everywhere. So you can even grow some mint on like your balcony if you don't have that much space or in your garden, if you have more space and just pull um, a few sprigs of that, boil some water, and then let that simmer for about three to five minutes. That's a great tea that's free of sugar and acts as a natural appetite suppressant. And it's an herbal tea, so you don't have to worry about the caffeine that could cause any sleep issues if you're having this later in the evening. So it's a great option you can test out um, and see if that helps with hunger. Uh, but if you are going back to hunger, if you are experiencing hunger and you're still experiencing hunger after even the first week or so of using intermittent fasting, so important that you actually take a look back at that eating window. Are you getting enough protein? Are you getting enough fat to actually get your hunger um, or your satiety hormones elevated? Because if you aren't, you will feel hungry during your fast. Or are you getting poor quality sleep that's causing your um, hunger hormone ghrelin to increase the next day? Those are the two really big factors, eating enough of the right types of foods, um, as well as making sure you're getting sleep to help prevent hunger issues with intermittent fasting. Because with intermittent fasting, studies are actually showing 
that you shouldn't be experiencing more hunger. In fact, most people experience decreased hunger levels when they use intermittent fasting, especially when you pair it with the proper amount of protein. So a couple things to consider with that. Okay, guys. So like I mentioned, today is day one of the New Year Intermittent Fasting Challenge. It's not too late to join in. If you want to join in even later this week, because perhaps you have some things going on, you can't join in just yet, make sure you check out the link down description below. This is seriously like one of the best challenges to have exactly what you need to use, not just intermittent fasting, but how to break your fast properly and the right types of exercises, everything that you need to help speed up your results with intermittent fasting while feeling really great in the process. So make sure you check out the details for the 28 day intermittent fasting challenge down description below. I love this challenge. There's a lot of grand prizes as well for um, one person chosen at the end. So lots of cool things. Um, but yeah, really great way to kick off 2022. I'll be doing another live stream next week. So I'll put a poll in the community tab so you guys can vote on what um, topic you want for next week. Um, but yeah, Awesome, guys. Keto coffee, cheers. Really great questions. Cheers to day one of the challenge. And I'll see you guys on tomorrow when I have a new video. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Okay. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, and other than that, make sure that you guys are just taking a look at these tips. Make sure that you review those tips so that you can achieve your goals um, and feel really great. But keto coffee, cheers, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.